Hey guys, this is AA Tech. Johnny here. Many of you are very interested in the recently released Xiaomi Tracking Charging Pad. Some of you even mentioned me many times, hoping that I can do a teardown. In fact, I'm very curious what's inside of it, mainly about how the charging coils move around in there. And lucky enough, one of my friends sent me this a couple days ago. It's also a wireless charger, but only a semi-manufactured one. You can even see the case is missing. From the top, we can clearly see there are many small coils, and for the mobile on the back, the quality should be quite familiar. Now look at the bottom lightning port. Many of you might have already figured out is the air power that Apple never bring to the market. All right, one by one, we start with the Xiaomi one. First, remove the bottom anti-slip pad. Screws are found below. Use razor blade to pry up the silver side strip. Then slowly cut through the adhesives underneath. Upon removal, we found that the two panels are fixed with adhesives. Use hair dry to heat it up. Then separate the side buckles with tweezers pried up along the edge. This corner is very tough. Use nearly 100% force. Ended up using the hair dryer. Finally did it. Next, first disconnect the top motor connection, then disconnect the pole connectors. The cover piece here is again fixed by adhesives. Heat it up and use tweezers, same technique to separate it. Open up the cover to expose all internal components. Inside we have four major sections, the tracking board, two motors, charging coils, and the motherboard. Since the X and Y axis lanes are different, the two rails have slightly different length. This connect the cable between tracking board and motherboard. Thick adhesives underneath the tracking board. Once heated, use tweezers to slide through the bottom. You can then remove it. Let's see how it functions. When a wireless charging phone is placed on tracking board, the board recognizes the coil location and sends over to the mobile. The mobile uses the location info to control motor movement and drive the coil to the designated location. You can charge it like this. When we remove the phone, the coil automatically goes back. Once it returns, we place the phone on the coils, actually no more response. With that said, when the phone is not recognized, charging is disabled. Place the phone on tracking board again. Drive the coils. Listen to this. When the coils return, the motor keeps spinning for a couple seconds, making the clicking noise. That's because the return stopping switch is on the tracking board. They can be triggered now. One stopping switch for each motor. When it returns, the plastic piece will hit the switch. Let me do this manually. I will press the switches down simultaneously. Both motors stop. If only one is pressed, the other one will keep spinning. Let's move on. Unbolt the two motor screws. Remove the motors. Below are two gears. Both motors share the same specs. Since the location is different, their cables are different. Unplug the coils and mobile connection, then peel off the rail fixing adhesives. The rail assembly can now be removed. Turn it over and split the coils and rails. The Luxshare ICT logo stands up a lot. Moving on and unbolt the two screws on the motherboard. Remove the motherboard. On the back side, we have the Luxshare logo also, and this mobile is just a single board. And this black color strip is colored on top of the rails to prevent sliding off the rails. I hope this will satisfy your curiosity. Next up, let's look at the semi-manufactured piece. First with the blade, cut off the top graphite sticker. By peeling off a bit, we found a transparent film underneath. Continue with the blade to pry it up. Pull slowly. Once that's done, you can see a lot of coils. So far, we don't know how many are there. The outer loop is covered by some thermal copper foil that's actually quite thick. The next layer is a plastic shield. Underneath it, there is much more adhesives. Cut through these glue spots. Once removed, we see more and more coils. 
use soldering iron to split the coil tips. Insert blade all the way down to the bottom layer. Struggle a bit, finally we peel off the coil assembly. Then peel off the plastic shield between the coils and motherboard. This plastic shield has many rectangular structures on it. Smells like painting ink, an irritating smell as well. It shatters under compression. I guess it's some sort of graphite material. I counted them one by one. All the coils added up to 22. Moving on, since the metal frame is soldered on to the mobile with tin, we need some help from the heat gun. Plus the large area of metal dissipates heat quickly, we're gonna need the heating station. To stabilize the temperature, then we use the heat gun to remove. The back side is even more crazy. Such gigantic piece of metal is also soldered to the motherboard. The heat generated by the coils and chips is conducted to the metal frame through grounds. Wonder how much power it runs with and that you need such heat dissipation lineup? Took quite a lot of effort, finally took them apart. Well, that's everything in the semi manufactured air power. The mobile is designed with high precision. The internal space is also perfectly managed. From its internal layout, we can tell Apple makes high standard products. Different from the Xiaomi tracking style charging pad, when I'm tearing down the air power, I feel more like tearing down a phone without display. Not sure why, until today, air power is still not officially released. For wireless charging, my personal thoughts is that in limited space, we might achieve air charging. It's like Wi Fi connection. Once there is connection made, it will charge any device within the space. With that being the case, we can call it true wireless charging. For these two products, how do you like them? Feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you like my video, be sure to subscribe. See you next time.